whatever. Anyway, so I've just got back from Paris. Gay Barry, as I mentioned um, last week, I went on a little weekend trip, you know, a little weekend break to keep myself active, to keep myself alive, to make sure I wasn't going crazy, to make sure that I was who I said I was. <laughs> no, um, we went, especially just to go see some friends who've now lived there, who've been living there for ba- I best, I think maybe just over six months. The other, because um, they're a couple, I think the other dude, he's, no, he's, he's a, he's a Parisian, um, and he's kind of moved into his parents' house, who've kind of uh, sadly passed away, but he's inherited an amazing apartment, which they're currently uh, fixing up. And then the other guy is like, and, um, he's from Spain, but he moved there as well quite recently too, to kind of, you know, hook up with his partner and settle down into quote-unquote post-marriage life. So we got to stay in their amazing apartment in the middle of Paris. Um, I'd basically say it's right in the center of Paris, a stone's throw away from the Champs-Élysées and all that malarkey just a great 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 apartment great location and again for me having been to paris a few times specifically um the last time i went there was to go see virgil's show the kind of i think the maybe the second menswear show he had um for off-white and that was a pretty good time don't get me wrong i I wasn't there long enough i was there for like a day and a half i kind of came in on the Eurostar late at night which you know i had to go straight to bed because there's nothing literally paris is a word let's yeah let's talk about paris right Paris is a strange place because for some reason it's one of the pit it's, it's um aesthetically and landscape wise and architectural wise it's probably one of the most beautiful cities you're ever gonna encounter in your life right it's amazing it probably only pales in comparison maybe to places like Rome and Milan you know those kind of places I'm sure I haven't been there but I'm, I'm assuming seeing the Colosseum that kind of thing is gonna blow you away right but there's something quite magical about Paris about France in general. You know, they've got a bit of a mystique about them. They're a bit stuck up their own ass, but it kind of adds to their appeal, right? So you go there and you're like, wow, amazing city. But then for some reason, unlike any other city in the world or most metropolitan city, especially a city like Paris, we're not talking about Brighton or Bristol, even though Bristol probably is is, is probably um, above Paris in this regard. Everything shuts at like 11 o'clock or 12, right? Everything shuts down. And I don't mean like, um, I don't mean just, you know, bars and clubs. I mean everything, and I, and I never knew how much of that could really affect the way you experience a city at night. Because sometimes, especially if you've been to New York or you've been to London, which is probably two really extreme examples. But let's say a Berlin, for instance, right? Not everything closes at nighttime, right? Some things stay open. Like you might, there might be an off license, a couple supermarkets or mini markets. Um, I don't know. There might be a liquor store open. There might be a random bike shop. There'll be just stuff open that just keeps the overall you know, landscape looking alive, right? But when everything shuts, like off licenses and post post office shuts on your regular time, um, outside of all the regular stuff that closes at the usual time, like banks, post offices and all that malarkey, when all that stuff closes down, even the bars that are open don't seem like they have a vibe in them, right? They just seem completely dead. It's like they purposely force everyone to go home or people just go home in general, which is very strange because, you know, France or Paris has um, all the ingredients necessary to have a really vibrant nightlife culture, right? They have some great buildings um, with some amazing interiors, high ceilings. You can imagine people putting on crazy warehouse parties in there, right? Um, they have access to some of the best wine you've ever had in your life, right? Great beverage, great liquor outside of the wine as well. Um, great beer culture too, which is something you don't really associate with Paris, but the beers there are really good, especially if you go to, we went to a couple craft beer places that were serving some amazing, amazing, amazing beers on tap. Um so it's got all the ingredients for it, but, and you know, a, a rich history of music, especially electronic music, right? It's the home of Electro for some reason, uh, for um, for all intents and purposes. Um, the birthplace of Daft Punk, you know, um, Brodinsky, you know, all those dudes, B, uh, Busy P. But yet there's not really a vibrant nightlife. It's a very, very strange place. Um, that aside, beautiful. Um, as I think as most of you people are aware, or as most people are aware, there is a distinct difference going to a place, especially a metropolitan city, especially a popular destination by yourself. And there's a big difference going to a place. Secondly, again, when you go um, to visit friends, right? And they show you around their city. You have such a better experience. It's so much richer because essentially when we went to go visit them, this couple, um, we essentially just did what they did day by day on a weekend. And we did, we planned it great too because I think there is a real, this is something people don't mention a lot, right? But there's a real skill in being a good guest to people that you go visit on holiday i think inevitably sort of like have you ever been out sometimes and you're you know you're high and shit or you've drank too much 
and you start making, you know, crazy, ridiculous plans with your friends or sometimes even with strangers, right? You start freaking plotting about going to a festival, starting a business, right? You start doing the most crazy thing because, you you know, you're just full of endorphins and you just think, you know, you want to conquer the world, right? Well, that kind of, I think that happens a lot sometimes too when your friends move away because there's that initial period when they move away and they're a bit lonely, they don't really have that many friends and they just want anyone to visit them, right? They've got probably, you know, if, if they've moved for a reason, if they've moved for some kind of purpose because they want to further their career, they've usually, you know, made some good financial decisions. They save up some money. They've probably got a really great space there, a space that's probably, you know, 10 times what they had in London or wherever else they lived. So they really want to show off their location. Hey, come, man, I've got my room. You can have your own room, blah, blah. You know what I mean? They're really eager for you to come down because they haven't really settled into the city yet. But it doesn't necessarily mean that when you go there that you should go for a week. It doesn't necessarily mean you should go there and disturb their work week either, right? There's a real skill to knowing how to time your visits so that when you eventually get there, because, you know, it sometimes does happen, you know, the person wants you to come over and they're really keen to do want you to come over and you go over there and then you know they've finally settled in a bit they've maybe got a few friends they've made some plans and they remember oh shit my friend's coming to visit me which basically means they're going to be you know um chained to you like a ball and chain for the whole entire weekend right and that can be a bit dodgy too and so i think that's a real skill in learning how to do it especially if you're going solo if you're going with a couple if you're going with a friend it's probably okay because you know they can if they want to just leave you guys alone and tell you to meet them later when they go meet their friends or whatever it can be a bit easier but i think when you're solo you have to do it properly good you have to kind of plan your visit um well in advance and we did quite well we left on saturday no we left on friday evening by the time we got to their place it was late at night we had a couple of drinks and we went to bed woke up in the morning had some breakfast at theirs went for a massive walk Visited loads of places, shopping, all that malarkey, came back, had some lunch, had a nap, woke up again, went for another massive walk, went to more bars and clubs, and then did the same thing on Sunday. So then when Monday rolled around, Monday morning, we were able to go. If anything, I probably would have maybe um, booked us a trip home on the Sunday evening, right? The le- the last train home. But I think the Monday e- the Monday morning train was pretty cool too. We, we, we basically got home. We basically opened the door to our flat. Uh, around 11 p.m you know what i mean so it was fairly decent but i do think it's something i don't people don't talk about often like how to be a good how to be a good guest in other people's houses because you do it even at home in your own city right you know if someone's having a house party that you shouldn't come empty-handed right you know if somebody invites you over you should maybe offer to order an uber or uber eats or a delivery or something like you know these little social cues right you know if you invite somebody out for a drink maybe get the first round these tiny things that, that need to be left unsaid but i think there's a real skill to like visiting people, especially now with Brexit and, you know, people in general, you know, we're all getting older and stuff. Everyone's kind of got different ambitions, of what they want to do. There's going to be a period of time where most of your friends might move away. You need to know how to kind of navigate that landscape. Right. So um, apart from that, great, um, great place. I don't really have anything more to say really about my visit there. Um, I don't know, man. It's just, it's just really, really, really magical place to be. Um, it kind of, it kind of lived up to all my expectations and more. And I just, again, man, I just, I need to emphasize how much better going to a place like um, Paris is with some friends. I'm gonna see if I can get these pictures up. Actually, this mirroring thing. I'm not sure how that works. Screen mirroring. What up? But it's something needs to be said about just how much better it is going to a place with your friends, right? And not just going on your own. It's just. It's, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to say, man. It's just absolutely insane. Let me see if I can get this up and see how this works. Um, uh, let's see. iPhone OBS. Mm, screen see if it comes up how do you get that on there ba, 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 ba. so maybe if i go open under sources let me see if i can do sources i can maybe add it on here see if it works media image what should i add here ios camera what is that i don't want that do i Does that work? How to, what's capture? How can I put my screen on there? Screen mirroring. Does that work? Mirroring. No, does that work or not work? How to mirror iPhone. How to stream from live video feed. How do I do that? Don't know why it's not working there. I'm not sure. There's a probably way to do it, isn't it? Does that change the mirroring screen to a PC? Hmm. It doesn't matter. 
Anyway, let's continue this. I don't have to use that mirror thing. My skills are not that great. But yeah, Paris was amazing. Recommend you check it out. I left just before Fashion Week started. So um, yeah, man. Paris is great. Paris is a great place to be. Um, again, um, it's weird how different it is to go to Paris on your own and not have a good time. But then you go to Berlin on your own and have a good time. I guess maybe different cities are set up different ways. Berlin is maybe maybe the most, if not the most spontaneous city out there. Maybe the only closest one is probably New York in that regard, right? It's a city that never sleeps. I remember even though I've been there a long time ago, I went there in, what, 2012 or some shit, um, or 2011. I do remember it being somewhere where you could just literally kind of fall in and out of different places, door to door, and just keep your night rolling, 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 rolling until the sun comes up. Um, you could probably do the same thing in Berlin too. And you could definitely do that on your own because it's so tight. Well, even though Berlin's a bit more sparsely spread out, same as as all great cities are. I think London probably suffers from that a little bit. Usually every area has to have its little hotspot, its little strip, its little go-to club bar, its little go-to restaurant, go-to shops, go-to bar. But like it has to have its little, it has to be, um, it has to have its own little ecosystem. So you don't need to go and travel far distances, right? This is my argument against... This is my argument for having um, different venues around London or north, south, east, west that are similar to fold, right? So that guys who live in the west London who want to stay out until 6 a.m. don't have to come way to east to come and party, right? They can just go to their version of, of fold, wherever that may be in west. I think that would be quite a good way to kind of spread stuff out so that, you know, you're not having, you know, overpopulated clubs and whatever, um, bounders having to turn away tons of people and whatever malarkey. But what do I know? Anyway, I'm back now. I'm happy to be back, actually. I'm good, happy to be back. I, I, I quite like doing this podcast, man, because, you know, all my, all my little silly thoughts in my head, I can finally get them out and keep that role moving. Anyway, let's move on, because the Paris conversation may be boring. It's, you know, it's like, it's like when you're at work and someone asks you about your holidays and you start going on a bit too long and you start realising, you start noticing the glazed look on their eyes when they're like, look, I, I, I don't care. I was just trying to be pleasant, right? There's a skill to that, too. When someone asks you at work, oh, how was your holiday? You don't go on and 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 on about your fucking holiday, describing every little intricacy, mentioning people who they have no idea who they are, no context, what they look like, ginger, small, fat, girl, boy. They, they don't know. They don't care. And you're just going on about these people that you met. For you, it's an amazing experience. It's so vivid. But for that person, they're just like, hey, I just, I was just trying to be pleasant. I saw you passing me in the, in the, in the staff's kitchen. I, I don't want your fucking autobiography. You know what I mean? So just rein it in. Um, there's a real skill to that really people don't do that too often i guess someone i'm probably a prime example of it people just love hearing the sound of their own voice right um you probably hear that you probably see that a lot on reality tv shows where they do that thing where they sit in on the screen and they're like you know with the backlit white lit and they're like i'm just trying to i'm just i'm just at the point in my life right now when i'm trying to figure out what is best for me and if no one else can see that then i'm just gonna leave them out of my life you know those kind of like empty vapid sort of like statements people make <laughs> mostly they don't really say nothing they're just saying the most obvious low-hanging fruit thing but you know people just like hearing the sound of their own voice right everyone's got their own reality tv show you have to look at fucking people's instagram stories nowadays to see like you know everyone's trying to you know pretend they're some sort of you know person that people should give a shit about which is crazy